Now, on Philadelphia's number one college radio station, WHIP, Rational Radio. Top candidates, right? Yep. President and vice president, candidates for our opportunity running for the Temple Student Government ticket. Um, guys, do you want to introduce yourselves a little bit? Yeah, sure. Uh, my name is Michael Horwath. I'm the presidential candidate for our opportunity. I'm a junior finance major here at the Fox School of Business. Uh, I'm also an RA in Morgan South, our lovely residence hall. And yeah, I'll pass it over to a lady. My name is Lady Carmela Robinson. Great name, by the way. I love that name. <laughs> Thank you. She, she's not a princess. She's not royalty. It's just her name. But, uh, still, I mean, you, you, you could have fooled me. You could have fooled me. Yeah, so um, I'm a sophomore risk management major, okay. and I'm running for vice president of external affairs. Okay. And by the way, Michael Horwath, we have uh, now hired you as our morning jazz show host. Uh, <laughs> Tuning in on the radio. Oh, gosh. Smooth jazz. <laughs> 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 All right. All right. So, so we know you guys had, uh, well, the election is going on right now, um, which is getting pretty heated, actually. I've been following it since the first debate, which was, what, last week? Yeah, it was last, last week. Monday. Last week. Which... We have our uh, upcoming one. On uh, coming up on Monday. Okay. Okay. What time is that, and where is it again? Uh, that's going to be, I believe, in uh, room two seventeen of the student center. Okay. Uh, I believe at five o'clock. Five o'clock. Mm -hmm. Okay. So if you have a chance, go out, check them out. Uh, it's really important that all all Temple students go out and vote. Um, so I, I was at the last debate, and the one thing that I really, you know, kind of got annoyed with was the short amount of time you guys had. So I really want to get to know you guys' platform and get to know you guys in general so the people out there know who they're voting for if they end up voting for you or, you know, with anybody else. Uh, so go ahead. Uh, tell us a little bit more in depth about your platform. Yeah, sure. Uh, so Al Opportunity is... is a platform that's trying to connect students directly with the administrators. Uh, we're trying to open up opportunities for all students. And so our platform is primarily focused on our three pillars, uh, pro providing financial freedom to the community, uh, connecting the communities, and engaging student life. Uh, we have such a great uh, student population uh, here on Temple University's campus that's involved with all aspects, not only in just Temple University, but Philadelphia as a whole. And we definitely want to utilize that um, as a student population. So to talk about like connecting communities, a part of our platform, actually one of the biggest points in our platform is creating a student senate. And uh, for the student senate, we, we want students to have a real voice, not just, oh, I'm gonna go to a TSG meeting, maybe sit around the GA. We want people to be representatives. So we want a representative from each year level of each school and college here at Temple because, for example, the problems of a freshman are so different from the problems of a senior. And we want to be able to have that broad spectrum of ideas, issues uh, that students are facing, real problems, so that we can be able to liaise that information to higher ups and have actually have a proactive plan to go about solving those issues. Um, and in terms of financial freedom and academics, uh, one of the things that we want to do is pilot an open source textbook program. So with that open source textbook program, it wouldn't be for all your classes just because of how difficult it'll be for a pilot um, program. It will just be for your intro level courses. So say uh, you said you're in SMC, right? I am an SMC. I'm a media studies and produ production major. Yeah, and uh, we're in business. So there are intro level courses that you have to take that all majors have to take. Okay. And there's also um, courses that we have to take that uh, all of the majors have to take. Okay. So those um, courses will be provided with open source textbooks that are uh, essentially catered towards Temple students and uh, the professors would pull together their resources so that Temple students would either have that at a very low cost or free. So I think that that's something that we want to do. We want to reduce that financial burden on students. And aside from that, did you want to talk about generalizing, um, standardizing gen ed courses? Yeah, sure. Um, 
Yeah, so jumping into that, uh, standardizing the general education programs is going to be directly <coughs> tied in with our open source textbook programs. Uh, so, for instance, uh, you're in your mosaics class. Uh, you're spending uh, 20 bucks on a book here, another 20 bucks on a book there. You have 10 books maybe for the entire semester that you have to buy that run up to maybe 100 bucks, 200 bucks. Uh, and so with the open source textbook program, we'd be able to uh, consolidate that cost and have all those books that you'd buy separately in one book that you can provide to students. Uh, there's actually already a program here uh, that focuses on open source textbook, but it's not widely used or known by Temple University students. Uh, so it'd be engaging those sorts of programs such as your mosaic, such as your uh, intro level math courses. Your all general, into one book. Yeah, all into all. Well, keeping them separately, but like have okay. all your mosaics books all in one book. So we mm -hmm. don't have to have you know jungle around like twelve different yeah. books, which yeah. is yeah. honestly gets annoying. Or I took eight hundred two last semester, and I had this high stack of readings <laughs> that we literally just had to print off. They said, here, print them off and, uh, you know, bring them to class the next day. But you, And we get we get free money, or printing money allotted mm -hmm. every semester. Okay. I ran out real quick. Yeah. Right, there was like 60-page right. readings, and I couldn't keep up. And then, you know, even w like half of them were even stable. Mm -hmm. So I was losing papers. Like maybe they, <laughs> they'd say, "Hey, open to page thirty-eight of you know the Kimmel reading," and I'd turn and you know thirty-eight's missing because it just fell out. Right. Right. So so th this ideally would keep everything together for one class, mm -hmm. right? And yeah, and it would give teachers the ability to pick and choose their books right away. Okay. Um, so they'd still have the ability to to sort of uh, refine their curriculum to to focus on a certain topic. Um, and so jumping on with that, uh, we want to help standardize the general education program. Uh, we understand that some classes, I know I had a class where I was writing uh, seven, ten uh, essays a, a semester, and that was more work than my, my generally focused class. Yeah. Uh, and there's there's been other classes where I've just shown up, watched a movie, wrote maybe two sentences about uh -huh. the movie, and I've gotten an A in the class. Yeah. And so we just want to make sure that uh, all the gen ed programs, all the mosaics programs, all the all your entry level programs uh, have the same amount of coursework. Uh, so that would just be working with uh, the professors and, and the department chair and making sure that uh, these professors are providing an even co coursework for all the students here. I like that idea honestly because I I went through it last semester with my again my 802 class and mm -hmm. I will. I will right. preach yeah. that this was cr so much harder than it really should have been. <laughs> I think during finals week, I had stayed up three nights straight in order to finish my papers, and they didn't even come out that great. It was like we had the readings in class, and then he gave us an assignment which had almost zero to do with the readings. Mm -hmm. He just said relate it to the readings, and then we had to find other outside readings to bring into it, and it just it turned into like work that was – Probably, probably, yeah, equivalent yeah. to like an actual journal, like research journalism class. <laughs> and it was, it was a gen ed that everybody has to take where other people are writing like two, three page essays and getting A's and I'm sitting there for six hours a night and mm -hmm. getting a B on my, you know, paper. But no, I, I love that idea. It's like almost like an anthology from elementary school. Do you yeah. remember those? Yeah, yeah. It's a combination of books. And, and since it's open source, like mm -hmm. teachers can add and, and subtract whatever readings they want. Uh, from semester to semester. It's, it's very flexible. Uh, it's it's open online. Uh, and we could also provide uh, print textbooks for those who students who want that physical copy. Yeah, sure. Sure, sure, sure. Joe, you got some? Yeah. Um, getting a little bit more into your guys' platform, um, one of the most interesting things that I looked at while reading was the uh, define your line um, thing that you guys want to implement. Could you go over what that is and how it would be put into place? Yeah, sure. Uh, so this is an initiative that I've been working on with the current uh, TSG administration this year. Uh, so I'm the director of student affairs. And so I've been working uh, closely with other members of TSG in, in implementing uh, the, the Define Your Line program. Uh, so traditionally, if you're looking at colleges and universities, uh, the first thing that you're told walking into the university is you can't drink alcohol. If you yeah. drink alcohol, uh, X, Y, Z is going to happen. Uh, and so we want to rephrase what Temple University is doing as a whole and, and start that initiative uh, across the nation. And so define your line is, is making sure that students recognize, yeah, you're going to go out and drink under the age of 21. 
uh, or above the age of 21. Uh, but I think it's important for students to realize that uh, there's there's limits for themselves. Uh, you don't want to go binge drinking uh, and blacking out. Uh, so defining your line is basically educating students on when they've drank too much and when they're binge drinking. Uh, so for an example, uh, I know when I'm been. I know I've reach my limit when I'm drunk texting my girlfriend or something like that. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. So the, the sentences are coming out yeah. right and you wake <laughs> up the next all, all morning. A jambled mess. You don't, you don't know what's going on. And you're not even sure what you were saying the next morning. You're talking about bagels at one moment and then the next moment you're talking about <laughs> pelicans flying in the sky. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So it's, it's just working with, first of all, student orientation, working with uh, university housing and implementing uh, a marketing campaign to educate students on the resources that we offer, uh, working with uh, basically all your al alcohol programs on campus and, and trying to rephrase uh, what they're telling students. Yeah, and we basically want to create a culture um, filled with responsibility, communication, because communication is key. And if you're coming in as a freshman, you haven't really had the experience of living alone or away from your parents. So in turn, you don't want to be that parent for the student. Like, you're not going to tell a student, oh, you can't do this, this, and this, because essentially you're not their parent. But you want to be able to guide, like, guide them and give them the resources that they need in order to be a successful Temple Owl. And that, that's what really... We we really want to do mm -hmm. is um, really give that education and that that culture of open communication because if you're an incoming freshman you don't want to be afraid of being able to speak out when you have like certain issues in terms of like drinking and things like that and we just want to keep it open mm -hmm. uh, another thing that we're tying in with the define your line program is don't stall just call so providing uh, options to students so where they can <coughs> seek uh, medical attention uh, without getting in trouble by university or, or the Philadelphia police. Uh, so making sure that uh, if we do cross our line, uh, we do we are provided with that medical attention without having to worry about, hey, am I going to have to go uh, to the city courthouse and pay a $250 uh, dollar fine for underage drinking? Or uh, am I going to worry about my parents knowing that hey, I got in trouble for, for drinking. Uh, so it's creating those open platforms where students can get medical attention right away. And it's also um, letting students know that these resources exist. So sometimes you come in as an incoming freshman and you don't even know that medical amnesty exists. Or mm -hmm. if you do hear about it, you actually don't really know what it's about. And it's, it's really informing students of the resources that are available and just making sure that they can utilize it and use it for their fullest ability. Yeah, one thing I have noticed this year, uh, like as a freshman coming in here, a lot of people think, you know, if you call med medical amnesty, everybody mm -hmm. incorporated is in trouble or that mm -hmm. person is 100 percent in trouble mm -hmm. but what i've come to figure out like they just want to help you mm -hmm. they, they're not there to say hey this person's been drinking you know write them up uh, a ticket and mm -hmm. you know throw them in jail or something <laughs> like that no they're there they're they actually come to help you um and they just want to make sure you're okay so when people are like no don't call it medical amnesty you know we all all are going to get in trouble and then or somebody does and then every all every one of their friend runs right, away right it kind of angers me cuz like they're there to make sure you're safe mm -hmm. not to get anybody in trouble um so another thing i wanted to talk about uh getting a little bit you know into more of student life um you guys proposed Diamond dollars at what meal trucks mm -hmm. the food trucks. Yeah, uh, tell us a little bit about that Yeah, uh, so what one of the things that we recognize uh, this year is more and more students are using diamond dollars uh, One of the things that I've personally done this year uh, With our TSG administration is is expand our diamond dollar services So we've we've been actually able to put uh, diamond dollars in Chipotle uh, diamond dollars and and blaze pizza and so having those services in larger corporate uh, food businesses are definitely great for our students. Uh, I think one of the things that we can improve upon is is focusing on our smaller businesses, such as our food trucks. Uh, right now, the technology uh, that we sell, that Temple University sells uh, to these businesses are very chunky, very expensive. Uh, and so in order to provide diamond dollars to these food trucks, we want to work with the current technology that we have and, and create an affordable platform to where all these food trucks are able to finance 
these these diamond dollar systems, utilize the Wi-Fi <coughs> that we have on Temple, and then be able to use a diamond dollar system within the food trucks. So you're promoting smaller businesses, and you're also engaging students. Because I, I personally, I love tasty chicken. Oh, really? I, don't, I don't know about you, but I love Tasty I Chicken. I love the crep truck. The cre I haven't been there yet. You oh, have no. You need Is to it go. Really? Yeah. Okay, because yeah. I always see that and I see Burger Tank. Yep, yeah, yeah. Burger, Burger Tank is good. right beside it, yeah. and I'm always the one time I actually went up to Burger Tank and I was like, "Hey, do you guys take Diamond Dollars?" And they looked at me like, "No." Yeah, yeah. Like, but well, what if they did? You would have. You're right. Probably I probably, I, yeah, I would have been right? able to try something new that day. Right. Yeah. And we, we want to give students more of a resource, you know, and not just yeah. in terms of academics, but also financially. Like, I know that being a student, it, you are broke. You have a lot of <laughs> you have a lot of financial mm -hmm. struggles. Yeah, so absolutely. we want to be able to give students that that open resource so that they can enjoy uh, student life and have that that great experience. Mm -hmm. It's sort of tying off of that uh, in, in, in regards to food stuff. Um, we want to. Uh, renegotiate. Oh, 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 wait, wait, oh, okay. wait. We actually I, have to take I a jumping? break. I have to. We have to take a break right now. But I want to get into that subject right when we come back. All right. All right. So we're going to take a quick break, a little commercial break. Uh, stay tuned here on WHIP on Rational Radio. We're talking to Owl Opportunity, and we're going to talk a little bit of the renegotiation of the Sodexo. I'm pretty sure. Right after the break. So stay tuned. This is Tyler from Keep It Moving. Be sure to tune in every Sunday at 5 for your hardcore and punk fix. Only on WHIP, Philly's number one college radio station. Good morning, sexy. Hi. So what do you want to do this morning? I don't know. I'm kind of busy. Why? Is there someone else? Kinda. I'm the host on the morning after on WHIP. Never heard of it. When can I listen? Monday, Wednesday, Friday from 10 to 11. Okay. Can I call you sometime? Sure. The number is 215-204-9447. Tune in to the morning after, Monday, Wednesday, Friday from 10 to 11, only on WHIP. Hey Temple, are you one of those people who like to discover new music? Well, I got just the place to be. Stream the new release show every Sunday night at 8. Be the first to hear it first, only on WHIP. WHIP. Philly's are you number interested one in advertising or sales? Station. Looking to make some extra cash? WHIP could use you as a member of their sales team. We're looking for motivated individuals interested in starting and growing advertising relationships for the station. Contact General Manager Ed LaFerge at 732-600-6552 for more information. WHIP Philadelphia. Online at whipradiotu.com and on your mobile device with iHeartRadio. <laughs> Radio station. You're listening to Rational Radio from this three to four four o'clock hour. You're here with myself, Nate Weaver, Joe Williams in the studio, along with the two can two head candidates for Al Opportunity. Uh, we wanted to go into we cut you guys off a little bit, but I want to I want to take it back a little bit. Please I actually talk got about this. Well, <laughs> 
I, I got a, I actually got a text from our news director who's listening live right now. Hi, Ryan. How are you doing? Uh, I hope your lunch with Mimi was great. Um, so he asked, how feasible is the the diamond dollars in, in food trucks? Since they are like cash and like small business companies, how, how feasible do you guys think it is to actually implement this? Yeah. Uh, so there are other universities that actually use the exact same system. And so it's just working with the already existing technology, uh, creating a, a financing package for them because we don't want them spending a whole chunk of money right away. And so by providing that financing option, it's affordable for them. Uh, they're also going to increase the amount of business that they're receiving right mm -hmm. away. Um, and so we're just we're trying to help those smaller businesses, trying to promote the, uh, the food truck culture that we've had on Temple University campus for 50, 70 years. Um, and yeah, so it's it's very feasible. Uh, other universities do it, uh, okay. and we just need to work with the current systems that we have, uh, create a financing program, and they can have it. Well, what about with uh, Sodexo? Because I, I I've been to the different places who they take meal swipes and whatnot, mm -hmm. but some of the stuff ends up going over meal swipes, so they make a good bit of money off of that. How would that go into like the renegotiation of the Sodexo contract and whatnot? Yeah. Uh, so right now, that's currently ending in a year. Okay. Uh, and so what we want to do with that is uh, we recognize that students uh, <laughs> don't, don't, really ne like don't necessarily Sodexo. enjoy Sodexo as much as, I guess, Sodexo wants students okay. to enjoy it. Uh, and so what we want to do is, is we want to make fair competition. Uh, so we want Sodexo to come in. We also want Aramark, uh, restaurant caterers, a whole bunch of other food okay. providers to come in for a taste testing panel. Uh, Interesting. We, we want them to come in, that is cool. prep some food for a, a whole bunch of students, and have a competition in which students are able to choose what dining service they want at Temple University. Um, so whether that be Sodexo again, or whether that be Aramark or any other catering service, uh, I think that's essential uh, in moving forward because we want students to have the opportunity to pick what food we have on campus. Can I be a part of that taste test? Yeah. Right? I mean, I'm not gonna lie. I love I love my food here, and I do end up going. I live in Morgan Hall, so I yeah. live I go like across the street a lot to like Plaza Pizza mm -hmm. or uh, uh, Koja Grill or something like that because I just don't sometimes don't enjoy Sodexo as much. Right. But right. sometimes they have the good stuff, like their mac and cheese. I will down their mac oh, and cheese the, uh, at Charleston or. Or, uh, oh, well, upper, Charleston, uh, yeah, yeah, Charleston too, but mm. like just when they have it at the dining uh, yeah, halls. The dining, uh, um, half of Morgan, you gotta love their mac and cheese. Oh, yeah. Yeah, 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 or the uh, diner downstairs. Yeah, yeah. Always love that place. Um, so moving a little bit forward, uh, on another big topic that was at yeah, I dropped the paper. Smooth. Sorry about that. <laughs> uh, another big topic that was at the debate the other night, and which draw drew a lot of attention, was the gender inclusive housing. Mm -hmm. um, and I remember, didn't you say something that you were actually included on some of the uh, current structure or yeah, so so with that i was actually involved with uh residence hall association my freshman year and one of the things that we were doing is starting a petition for gender inclusive housing uh so i was one of the first people to go out uh ask students hey is this something that we want at our university and it turns out this is something that students want at our university okay um I think what's interesting is all the other tickets, when they talk about gender-inclusive housing, uh, they, mentioned, they originally mentioned it as gender-neutral housing. And we don't, we don't want to label it as gender-neutral. Uh, we want to keep it as gender-inclusive. Uh, so for those of you who don't know, uh, gender-inclusive housing is an uh, option for students to live in apartment style, suite style, uh, any type of style apartment. Uh, regardless of your gender identity, regardless of your sexual identity, regardless of whatever background you come from, uh, you're provided with that housing option right away. Uh, so by labeling it as inclusive, uh, you're opening it up to whoever you want. Uh, and so with that, we want to provide a transparent option for students who want that. Uh, right now, if you wanted a gender-inclusive housing option, uh, you, have to, you have to pull some strings. Uh, and it's very difficult for students uh, to have that sort of option at our university. They have to call up housing, uh, go through a whole tedious process, and we want to streamline that. We want it to be as transparent as having an option on your housing portable, uh, portal to where you can just write in, hey, I need this sort of option on Temple University's campus. Check a checkbox, 
And then those people who want the gender inclusive housing are put in the same pool that also want that gender inclusive housing. Uh, so you're not segregating it uh, to an LLC like another okay. team has proposed. Uh, yeah, you're opening it up to whatever housing option they want. And, and it shouldn't be something that is uh, sort of in, including or not, excluding a certain group it shouldn't just be oh a certain floor it should be mm -hmm. it should be open for everyone and going back on RHA the residence hall association like we were both involved and hearing a town hall forum personally hearing someone that was transgender who felt so unwelcomed in residence halls and residence life it's it's so underwhelming because that's a temple student there there are everyone's temple students and they should all have equal opportunities so so what we want to do is make sure that there is that transparent housing that to make sure that students are feeling welcome when they do live on campus because that's what you want you want students to feel happy you want students to feel that when they come home they're safe and that they're included yeah we we want temple university not only to be the top of academics not only to be the top of athle athletic facilities uh, but we also want temple university to be the top contender of a social university uh, and so by expanding those housing options uh, you're making temple university that much better mm -hmm. so with these people that are checking the boxes off would they ideally then go room together is that what what it would be yeah so um we obviously don't want to put any individual in a, a, a situation that they're not comfortable with right. so we don't want to force anybody to be in gender inclusive housing that doesn't um but for those of the students that want the sort of option they'd have the ability to opt in uh, so so instead of uh checking off that you're male or female uh, you would also have a third option to where you'd also have uh the ability to check off gender mm. inclusive Interesting, interesting. I I kind of I kind of like that idea because then it, it opens it up for everybody. Mm -hmm. It kind of gives uh, anybody because you can choose you can choose where you live, mm -hmm. you can choose what style you live in, it, it and you can choose to live in an LLC. And it does make sense that if you want to, you, you know, uh, go in random, but you know, it, it's already separated as of right now between you know you either room with boy, guys or you room with girls. Mm -hmm. yeah. So I, I I like I think that's a good idea. I'm taking a gender in America class right now, and oh, we've cool. been talking about that just that kind of topics a lot recently like mm -hmm. how people you know like to classify themselves the one way and that's that's the way they're living their lives mm -hmm. you know um but anyway um pushing forward to greek life what in your guys's platform you know goes with greek life because this this is co connecting uh you know students with I, I see a big separation between like the actual Greek life and like student life um, with them being like a lot of off campus stuff or and like not operating as much on campus that they, as they are off campus. Um, so to go on on Greek life, I'm actually in Greek life myself. Okay. Um, I'm a sister of a Alpha Sigma Sorority Incorporated. We're a smaller multicultural Greek organization. So our experiences are much different from Panhel and IFC. But all Greek individuals have the same virtues, have the same values. And to go off on that, I think that Greek life brings a unique experience to campus. And some of the things that we want to do to support Greek life, I don't know if you're aware, do you know what deferred recruitment is? I don't, actually. Yeah, so deferred recruitment is when an incoming freshman cannot join any Greek organization, but they can join in their first semester, but they can join in their second semester. Okay, and yeah, that was, got me, because uh, yeah, I'm, I'm yeah. in the middle of pledging right now, and I couldn't pledge uh -oh. my first semester. I just didn't know what it was called. But keep <laughs> right, going, keep right. going. Sorry so, to cut you off. So it's something you implemented with your incoming class, and mm -hmm. uh, I think that a lot of the Greek organizations now, we're seeing sort of a hindrance in us in terms of recruitment and rushing individuals to join our Greek organizations. And, and what we want to do on our platform is to enable TUGA, which is the Temple University Greek Association, and other councils to be able to come to freshman orientation and talk about Greek life, just as MCPB does, just as TSG does, because it is a unique aspect of Temple, and sometimes students don't even know that it exists. Mm -hmm. And come their senior year, they find this amazing group of guys or girls, and they're like, well, I could have joined, knowing that knowing that you existed a couple of years ago. Mm -hmm. So I think that it's making sure that students know that, that Greek life does exist. Aside from that, um, today I actually met with Sarah Sapkowski. She's um, the current program coordinator for Greek life. Mm -hmm. And um, she, I was asking her about things about expansion, what are the new orgs that are going to get on campus. And and I was asking her, like, what are what is life for you? What are the What is everything like for you having to handle 
20 plus chapters on campus yep. having mm-hmm. to handle all these different organizations different cultures different backgrounds and she's like it's so much work and and on our platform we want to create a support for the NPHC and MGC organizations so they can have their individual advisor so that there's not just one person ha- juggling four councils and 20 plus chapters there's there's more to it than just just one voice there's two voices that that are advocating and she agreed with me on it and she was like that would release a burden of stress on me so much because you do need that help you do need that extra push because Greek life is growing on campus. Before, it used to just be around 10%. Now, it's increased to around 15 and increasing as the years go on. So, it's something that we should definitely do, as, as, especially if we want to keep that that unique aspect of student life on campus. And and uh, I see a lot of, a, honestly, a negative stigma towards mm-hmm. Greek life. A mm-hmm. lot a mm-hmm. lot of a negative stigma towards Greek life. And uh, what, I, what I have come to notice is that some people don't really sometimes understand the benefits now mm-hmm. there are the you know the typical people that do join greek life uh, like we're, we can't just you know tiptoe around that mm-hmm. but what what to you because you, since you're in greek life what to you are the benefits of greek life family family um, that's that's something that i say all the time it's like coming from a smaller organization that's one of the first things i say it's it's your family and i'm an actually an international student so mm-hmm. i don't i don't have anyone here with me but i can always count on my sisters to have my back to, to take me to the hospital if i need to <laughs> take me to the mall if i need to go shopping and hey. and it's, it's the little things that matter but i think to speak for all of greek life it's it's the virtues and values that we have so sisterhood and brotherhood service to the community which is huge a lot of the big um, charity organizations like Relay for Life and Hudathon, mm-hmm. a lot of their members and a lot of the fundraising efforts come from Greek organizations. Mm-hmm. And I'm not sure which Panhellenic sorority uh, was able to fundraise over $10,000 for their soror- for their philanthropy of choice in one semester. So I think that, that that's something that not a lot of people know about because they, they always assume that stigma that occurs and we want to remove that and and highlight these organizations, for example, like Student Org of the Week, okay. making sure that people know that these organizations are, are doing a lot of effort and putting in a lot of time to making the temple community and the local community a better place. So so that's something we would do as our opportunity, making sure that people know and that things are recognized, especially when things people do positive things yeah absolutely okay. before we have to uh, get into another break um i did want to touch on you just said that you were an international student and <laughs> yeah. i noticed that um that was one of the things on the out opportunity platform um what would you guys do to you know accommodate i guess international student and make their transition coming from overseas to temple a bit smoother uh so being an international student myself uh Usually, I don't know when your freshman orientations were, but they're usually during the summer. Yeah. So um, I'm pretty sure for me it was the week before school got in. Wow. And mm-hmm. I did not know anything about Temple. I didn't know where to go, what, where to not go, what to eat, what to not eat. And um, I think that international student support has to really be heavily based on a lot of things so one making sure that students know what resources they have i keep going back on it and for example visas not a lot of international students know that they can actually get an internship visa so they can if it does if it's not required by their major they can still apply for an opt visa where they can work over the summer in america and making sure that that resource is known for international students because if, if I don't know, then I'm not going to be able to get that opportunity. And I think that working with the Department of International Students, mm-hmm. which was, as my, Michael has yeah. informed so me, that, was that was that, that was just newly created like yeah. a month ago. Uh, and so our international population has grown 100% within the past five years. Uh, we used to be around uh, 1,500 international students, and we've doubled since then. Um, and so it's just recognizing... Uh, that our, our student population of international students is growing. And these students are gonna need different resources, uh, such as writing center uh, help, uh, such as uh, different types of counseling services for homesickness. Uh, I'm personally the uh, RA of the Global Living Learning Community in Morgan Town. Okay. Uh, so I work directly with international students uh, in, in helping them uh, and making Temple <coughs> University uh, that much better. And going back on standardizing general education courses, I know sometimes international students, for example, in 802, they would take an 
English as a Second Language um, course, and having that option for not just English-based or writing-based courses. So, for example, say I'm taking marketing, making sure that the professor knows that an international student has a very has a different way of learning because uh. of the language barrier, but that shouldn't be something that hinders them. It should be something that helps them. So as a professor, making sure that that environment, that good learning environment where international students can be able to say, hi, so I'm an international student. I don't really understand this. Teach me. And making sure that professors do acknowledge that in their syllabus. Because if that's not acknowledged there, then they can't uphold anything. It's, it's essentially a contract for students and for professors. So, yeah, making, mm-hmm. making sure that they have resources. All right. Well, I think we have to go to our second break of the afternoon. Yeah, we do. We uh, could talk the whole hour, but the, there are rules. <laughs> <laughs> there are rules and regulations, and we don't want to make old boss man mad in the other room right now. But uh, So we're going to take a quick break. We'll come right back. We'll, uh, the last two topics of the afternoon, just get you guys a little bit excited about it. Um, the stadium nice, and campus nice. safety. Cool. 15 more minutes on the hot seat. Oh, yeah. Get yeah, ready. Right. <laughs> <laughs> The Summer is Forever 2 Tour featuring Best Coast and Waves is coming to the Electric Factory February 17th. The co-headlining tour comes on the heels of both bands' 2015 album releases, Best Coast, California Nights, and Waves 5. Tickets are still available and you can get them at Ticketmaster.com. Oh, oh, all in together now, we can make it better now. Come on, can we do it? Yeah, you know that we can. It out. Today's a good day to grab your kids and hang out with them for an hour. Dance, walk, play a sport, or cook a healthy meal. Because just moving a little and eating better every day can help make you and your child healthier. Can we do it? Yeah, you know that we can. We'll ball it up. Cause we know how to hoop. We'll mess around. Cause we know how to play. We'll drop it down. We'll drop it down. Cause we know how to dance. We'll veg it up. Search We Can online to find doable tips and activities that you can use every day to keep you and your kids healthy. Remember, that's We Can. A message from the Ad Council, HHS, and NIH's We Can program. WHIP. Philly's number one college radio station. opportunity with us today as our guests and uh, we've done a very good interview thus far I'd say but um we've danced around a couple major topics that just have has to be asked the the huge gigantic elephant in the room so I, I'll just I'll just get right to it um no there's a little uh thing that's being proposed that might come to 
main campus. A, a little thing? Yeah, a, a little, little thing. thing. Yeah. Just a little thing. <laughs> I'm pretty sure I can fit it in my pocket. It's so small. <laughs> and, and that's um, that's a football stadium, a, pro- a proposed football stadium for our football team, as well as it could be used for a number of other things. Um, I want to give you guys the opportunity to, you know, tell the listeners out there what is our opportunity stance on a proposed football stadium. Yeah, sure. Uh, I think what's great about our opportunity and and the team members that we have is uh, we have a variety a variety of different opinions on the stadium. Um, I know personally, uh, it's it, there's no, there's no doubt uh, that putting a gigantic stadium uh, in North Philadelphia isn't going to impact the community. Uh, and so, like, moving forward, I definitely think it's important uh, to take not only the students' opinions uh, into concern, but also the communities. Um, and also, I think, uh, personally, I, I think it will bring, uh, if it goes through, a great culture that Temple University is lacking. Uh, bringing the alumni back to campus is definitely going to strengthen our, our relationships, not only with alumni, but the companies that the alumni work for. Mm-hmm. Uh, and so ha- by having that connection, uh, we're helping imp- improve our students' uh, perspectives in getting jobs, internships, uh, and just experiencing uh, Temple University's culture coming back. I know a lot of alumni that I've met uh, at network- different networking events in the city, uh, they haven't come back to Temple University's campus. Uh, and so they don't know our awesome technology buildings that we've built, mm. uh, the CERC. Uh, and even just Fox, that's, that's built in 2008. I know a couple of alumni... Uh, who haven't been since the 90s. Yeah. Uh, and so by bringing them back to campus, we're definitely developing uh, our relationship with that. Uh, that being said, I know you have a different personal opinion. Well, it, it's not essentially personal. It's more It's more of thinking of what Temple Student Government should be and what Temple Student Government sh- role is for students. So you're there as the governing body for the students and you're not the governing voice for the students meaning that you have to make sure that you're you're essentially hearing all the students opinions out which is why we want to implement a student senate so that we are gaining the the information from not just ourselves the individuals who are involved in student organizations and temple student government but also students that are in other schools and colleges that may necessarily may not necessarily have such a strong voice and and temple student government should remain unbiased in in the stadium and okay. make sure that they are the ones facilitating the conversation of pro and against and or pros and cons and making sure that both facts are laid out on the table because a lot of times people assume certain things such as oh they're going to tear this down or oh they're not even going to build it yet there, there's just so many things that not a lot of people know the facts of and i think what we really need to do is have those conversations and and open it up make sure that the community is still present because without the the community that we have around us what are we temple that's what makes temple unique the the community that surrounds us Everyone knows mm-hmm, that, mm-hmm. Yeah. and and that's a, an experience that you have as a temple owl, and that that's what we want to do. Make sure that there's an open conversation that we are facilitating as temple student governments, as temple student government, and being the governing body, not the governing voice, because there's okay. a big difference. Yeah. Okay. So if this stadium is to be built hypothetically, mm-hmm. which <laughs> as of right now it's looking promising, um, what are your guys's top like benefits? and cons and which way are you swaying uh so again i I, we're not going to sway either way okay uh of course we're going to have personal opinions um but we want the decisions uh that are made to be made by our students so with the with the creation of our student senate uh we'd be able to reach out uh to a variety of different temple university students uh currently the only people that go to the board of trustees meetings are the presidents and vice presidents of TSG. Uh, okay. and we, so we want to open up those opinions to all of our students. Uh, and with the creation of the Student Senate, we'd be able to uh, figure out what sort of uh, changes we want at a university, such as the stadium, and then present all of those collective opinions uh, to the president. Uh, pros and cons, I definitely see uh, a significant increase in our alumni relations. Uh, I know we we have a newly uh, founded (coughs) alumni mentorship program uh, that's opening up 
And so by having that connections, by driving alumni back to campus, again, you're improving job perspectives. I also think you're also uh, creating an environment where Temple students are happy and proud to say that they're a Temple Al. Uh, they can go to other universities and say, hey, why don't you come to our football game this weekend? <laughs> uh, and so having that culture behind Temple University and by having other students interested at Temple University, you're, you're promoting our brand. Uh, you're making Temple University all that better. Uh, some of the cons, uh, which I think, I don't, know, I don't know if they're necessarily cons. I think it's just something that uh, we need to provide opportunities to grow upon. Uh, but definitely looking at the impact of uh, the space and construction during the time. Uh, so making sure that uh, there's noise variances that are, are being upheld uh, and making sure that it's not affecting uh, the residents' lives around that uh, area around the stadium where the construction is occurring. Uh, and so after the construction, uh, I definitely see it being a great benefit to the, uh, the community as a whole, not only Temple University, uh, because you're promoting businesses. You're having businesses come in, uh, and that added source of commerce is going to develop the community as a whole. Uh, you're also providing jobs to people, uh, and those jobs... Uh, are going to help, again, develop uh, relationships with the community. And then, again, uh, you're also providing an option uh, for students to come together uh, and the whole community as a whole. And you're also providing uh, a place where uh, high school football teams can come in, utilize the stadium, not only just high school football teams, but for high school graduations. Uh, they need a larger space uh, so they'd be able to utilize the football stadium, not just for sports, but other for other large events like that, you guys are probably the first people I've heard like bring the actual high schools into this yeah. and say something about you know them the community the actual Northeast Philly community going in and using the stadium. Mm -hmm. A lot of it's been about you know what it's going to do to the locals. It, it, like it, if it is, and I hear I'm going to be honest. I hear a lot of people saying it's going to crazily gentrify the whole area and throw everybody out of the area um, that lives here as locals. Mm -hmm. And one of my responses to that ha has been, we're doing that already. Mm -hmm. It's it's a process at the moment. And the, the people that are actually in going to Temple University and making it as great as it is are the people that are creating the higher – rent the higher right. living expenses for the people out in the local community the only way that we're going to keep the, the those prices and and their ability to live here the same is if we level off or we start going downhill as a university mm -hmm. that's one of the ways that i'm looking at this and yeah and, it, and it's also giving back like what michael said like the local high schools mm -hmm. a lot of uh our campuses students most of them are commuters so you have a lot of people that did go to high school say in like central or like in the mm -hmm. northeast area and i think that being able to utilize that space to give back to the community gives it a, a sense where we're not completely destroying that that connection that bridge where we're making sure that everyone's included because it's not just temple it's not just the temple students that go here it's the it's a local community that surrounds us too and that's in the t unity statement we have to make sure that we're not we're not just creating and building a better community for ourselves but for those that are around us Okay, and to our last, because we're we're almost about out of time, but I wanted to touch on <laughs> okay. this last thing because a big thing at Temple University is campus safety. Yes. Yeah. And they brought up in the debate that there was a, a 1.3 million dollar enhanced security put into what the budget. Mm -hmm. What would you guys, you know, petition for with that money, or what would you? What are your ideas to use that money with, mm -hmm. um, in order to enhance the security in this area? Yeah. So one of the things that I've actually sat in on is the uh, the <coughs> not just the Temple University's police, but the Philadelphia police. Uh, the our district was actually given a grant for uh, security cameras uh, that the police officers are able to have on their bodies. Uh, okay. And so with that. I definitely see implementing new technologies like that uh, in our police force. Uh, being able to have that video footage uh, during crimes or, or just just looking back at what had happened during an event uh, provides an ability for students to protect themselves uh, and making sure that uh, justice is heard and, and justice is served correctly. Because uh, I know um, we live in a day and age where 
uh, we, we have smartphone cameras all the time, but we're not always going to have our smartphone cameras out. And by having that footage uh, and using that technology, we're able to provide uh, peace and justice. And also, um, I'm actually a risk management major, and I sat in on a lecture that's sort of similar to campus safety at Temple, but it's about the Philadelphia Fire Department and how they utilize data in order to make sure that their first response to a, a, an instance of a fire was very quick. So some of that money could be used towards data collecting to make sure that, for example, you have to type in on TU portal where you live uh, if you're not living in a residence hall. And if you are, you still kind of have to type it in. And using some of that data that we have and making sure that those densely populated areas with students have fast responses, not just for Temple Police, but for Philadelphia Police. So when those calls come in, when when lives are at danger, the response is there. And the, the risk and the severity that occurs isn't as high as it should be. And and could be. But I think that, that that's one of the things that we could do to utilize the money that is given to us. Because making sure, being smart about the decisions we make, not just buying great technologies, mm -hmm. like it's always mm -hmm. great, you know, always making sure that your, your campus and everything is up to date, but also being smart about the decisions we make. Because it could be as simple as making sure that the patrol areas are closer to densely populated uh, student streets rather than having it all the way out where there's no students that live there. So making sure that we are communicating with campus safety, campus police to, to make sure that they know where students actually are. Okay. Well, I think that sums it up. Yeah, yeah. We're coming up uh, to the end, end of the interview. Unfortunately, we'd like to just keep <laughs> you here for as long as we could. But um, before you guys get out of here, um, are there any closing statements you know that you'd like to make? Any final things you want to say to maybe sway a voter who oh, I might be voting for this ticket, might be voting for this ticket, but here's our opportunity. So you guys have the floor to end the show. Yeah, sure. Uh, so I think what separates us from all the other tickets uh, is Al Opportunity is a group of students that doesn't just have ideas. Uh, they've already been implementing their ideas. We, I've been already working with gender inclusive housing, working with already diamond dollar systems. Uh, and while the other teams may have all these brilliant ideas, uh, they're not implementing it and they're not feasible. Uh, so by having a team where we've already been engaging with our administration, we've already been making change, uh, we're making that opportunities that much better. Um, please check us out on our website. We're alopportunity.com. We're also on Twitter, Facebook, Snapchat. Follow us, Snapchat. <laughs> Follow us oh, yeah. on social media. <laughs> okay. Snapchat. Uh, and yeah, voting dates are next week, next Tuesday and Wednesday. Uh, it'll be plastered all over your TU portal. Uh, so come out and vote. Yeah, make sure you vote our opportunity because it's not just our opportunity. It's our opportunity. <laughs> well, dang. I like that. That's a closing <laughs> statement right there. That's a closing statement right there. All right, well, that'll do it for uh, Rational Radio today on this wonderful Friday afternoon. Um, thank God it's Friday. Yeah. I'm ready yeah. to get out of here. It's been, I think we went up at least three degrees on the thermometer. It got pretty heated. Uh, <laughs> so, without ado, Joe, it's been great. Al Opportunity, it's been great. Thank you. I appreciate you, you guys you. coming in and uh, spending your time with us. Uh, make sure to tune in next week to Rational Radio, Monday through Friday. We actually have the last TSG ticket coming in. Take mm -hmm. to you Monday, right before the debate. Uh, so make sure you turn in, tune in for that.